Heidi ho folks, and welcome back to Cosmic Crit, the only podcast in the verse bringing you multiple seasons of the award-winning Starfinder role-playing game. We are home of the Pronk U Burger and the all-you-can-drink bottomless black milkshakes. This is your GM and server here tonight, Patrick, and I want to take this week's intro to talk to you listeners out there about our Patreon. You kind folks listening who've already backed us on Patreon, uh, I, I guess you can skip this, but first of all, before you fast forward, I want to say thank you. Um, you guys have made it possible for us to start our second podcast, Dead Men Roll No Crits. Uh, we launched over there uh, last year in 2020, and it's been a super fun way to dive into Pathfinder 2nd Edition. If you haven't heard the podcast, we will eventually release some of the starter episodes here in this feed, but for now, there are over 30 episodes on the Patreon, and you can gain immediate access to them right now by supporting us at the $5 pronking patron level or higher. The the next level up after that is the $10 level, and it's called the Flanking Buddies level, and at that point you get shoutouts on the Cosmic Crit podcast whenever we roll crits, and you can write in and call out a loved one or a friend or, heck, even your entire game group. So just a quick blurb about Dead Men Roll No Crits. It is Tyler, Rebecca, and Jabert from Cosmic Crit, along with friend of the show and artist Seth. We are playing through a maximized and converted Pathfinder 2nd Edition version of the Skull and Shackles Adventure Path. So you've got a swashbuckler, a monk, a druid, and a rogue making their way across the Shackled Islands in search of plunder and infamy in this pirate adventure. They've got a large pirate crew, and this is the last week of our February Patreon fan challenge to create your own NPC and have that character Join the crew as a swab on the deck of their pirate vessel. So if you join now, you've got one week from when this podcast airs to join into the contest. But if you miss it, we're always seeking fan feedback for Dead Men Roll No Crits from the name of the crew uh, the pirate ship um, operates on to the name of the podcast itself. Uh, Those were all voted on by Patreon backers. And that customization of the podcast is going to continue as we reach crucial decision points that need to be voted upon. Anyway, that's the fun that we're having over on Patreon. We haven't set goals yet for some of our larger milestones in the future at the $1,000 and $1,500 tiers, but if you got ideas, let us know in the comment section or via direct message. We also have a... Uh, a secret Discord channel in the Cosmic Crit server that you only get access to if you become a Patreon backer. Anyway, that's going to do it for this week's intro. We need to get back into the mindscape, both literally and figuratively, as Midnight Squad becomes Silvery Sand Pirates themselves, air sailing the unsafe clouds of the Swarm Mind Realm. This week's episode is number 173, and we call it The Midnight Zone. Episode commencing in 3, 2, 1. Episode initiated. I'm a genius video game designer setting off on my own, and the first game I make is about the importance of delivery people in a post-disaster fractured America where people self-isolate in bunkers. That's right, this week we're diving into Crit Stranding. This is your GM Patrick here, aka your grenade lobby mule, ready to stunlock you into dropping your loot, joining me in escaping a time fall, and collecting chiral crystals on my five friends and your fellow waving porters. To my right, she's chemically analyzed your pee pee and says you drink way too much monster energy drink. It's Rebecca rolling with Zinnia. Hello. Across from her, he's got an exo suit that allows him to scale mountains choked with snow. It's true, delivering Echo 7. Is Death Trending just Paperboy for the 21st century? Yes! To my right, it's a large beach dolphin spitting black goo everywhere. Or as we like to call him, Tyler dredging up to Fox Show. Ah, dolphin sounds. <laughs> Across from him, snacking on this little crypto bio gives you magical powers. It's Jabert playing his trust. Hey! And across the digital table, this little bridge baby's crying all night long until you sue them back to sleep. Why, it's Miles mixing up with sprouts. Good evening. Hey, guys, how are you doing? 
pretty good. I'm doing great, Patrick. Let's be real about Death Stranding for a second, and then if you play that on the PS4, the baby cries out of the speaker on the controller, and that is one of the <laughs> most unsettling the, things the in video thing game I history. Turned off in options, I was one, like, nah, one hundred percent. Yeah, it's like, oh, great, great game design, but sorry, not gonna happen. <laughs> and that's yeah, all there is to say about. <laughs> Sorry, you go ahead. <laughs> and that's all there is to say about Death Stranding. Yeah, I was going to say, I have enough problems with hearing phantom cries right now as it is. And so <laughs> I don't need I don't need one. Your controller out of my controller. <laughs> your video game controller starts pointing well, at you and you're like, all right, here's your bottle. Well, the other side of that is that if you wear a headset, like even if it's the fancy Sony headset, the baby cry would still come out of the controller. So you'd be sitting there in absolute silence, except a baby would start crying. Well, yeah, the the way you have to soothe it is like hit like certain buttons and like rock it back and forth. Another thing you can change, I think, in the game options <laughs> as you move on. That's anyway, really lame. <laughs> it's a great game, but I wanted to start this week's episode and do something we haven't done in a while, which is look at some comments about us online. That's right. Let's Review podcast ratings and reviews, and uh, I, I, I think no. Have more, we ever done this? No more than an annual segment from here on out. Call. Why do we do this to ourselves? <laughs> um, if you are like me and you like this podcast, and you perhaps haven't commented or rating us before for and you're listening right now uh, please do um it helps other people that look at those kind of things when they're starting a podcast if you know helps them decide if they want to initiate listening to us um but first up um i just want to uh, highlight a couple of i guess more recent reviews from podbean we had a new listener who said um it's kc2k Uh, I only just found you guys already up to episode 13. Looking forward to catching up to your latest podcast. Good luck with that. (laughs) Um, Keep up the great work and keep explaining rules as they come up. Okay. We'll do so. I mean, we we peak at episode 20. We we definitely did. We definitely did keep doing that thing. That is a great (laughs) episode because that's, I think, the one where Akata's show up. It's called No Rest for the Weekend. No. Uh, I think that's when we start getting into oh, what's what's Starfinder poison rules like? <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, next up from iTunes, Elmaster Eight, um, a little late last year, uh, said this podcast is great. Starfinder play, uh, fun group to listen to while I'm bored at work. I'm actually learning also the system by listening to them play. Five star rating. Nice. Well, thank nice. you very much. Yeah, I was. I can't remember if I've told this story here or not, but that was how I learned D and D for the first time. Mm. Was uh, just I sort of I read rule books about it, and I'd done a lot of reading, but I could not wrap my head around it until I downloaded an actual play podcast, and that's sort of what like crystallized. It for me. Like, oh, that's what you do. I get it. <laughs> yeah, um, well, one thing that's one thing that's nice about the age of the internet is there that. And and I this is kind of I'm pulling a comparison here from at least board games. There is a big difference between understanding the rules of a game and understanding the flow of a game. Right. And what's nice about an actual play is that you get both of that. You get like, OK, so this is what this is how the rules are. But this is also how like a game is going to hit beat wise and, and how people actually interact and play during a session, which is, is, is kind of good to know. It can be hard to figure that out when you first. There's there's only been one piece of traditional media that I can think of that shows Dungeons and Dragons play for an extended period of time, not like a, you know, 30 to a minute segment. And that's the community episode uh, of, of D and D, which is not like actually how people play, but shows like, you know, turn order and like combat and, you know, talks about role play and dice rolling, uh, everything yeah, else, so- like from, the movie E.T. to Stranger Things, you know, you get like little snippets of like how to play. And it's like, that doesn't really help. Yeah, because they never show you the the parts of the game where the DM's trying to move the game along and all the players are not participating. <laughs> well, uh, but I also the- think that there's a difference between having an episode that 
is about a thing and an episode that features a thing. The community episode is about playing D and D. Yeah, like the the episode has comedy, but it is the it is the only episode that is about D and D. Whereas something like Stranger Things is these kids play it, and I. I, I think narratively, it doesn't make sense for us to be privy to the ins and outs of their game. But for something like Community, which is also when this aired, probably trying to explain a little D&D to people and was mm-hmm. probably written by people that play d and I think it makes more sense. I'm just saying it's uh, it doesn't happen very often. It's it's as popular even as D&D is right now as we talk in 2021. I, I feel like it's not getting a lot of... Um, no, 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 getting pushed to the forefront. But anyway, those are some ratings from this last year. And I want to thank everyone that's listened and reviewed. Um, I know we don't have the largest podcast audience out there, maybe the most insane, fervent fan base, but Crittermanders are the best we could ever ask for here. Discord community is amazing. So thank you guys for listening. Uh, for everyone Here on the podcast, I have a quick pop quiz out of all of the podcasts in the entire world. What percentage would you say Cosmic Crit is in terms of listenership? Oh, we're probably like in the uh, like what what percentile we are. Yeah. Yeah. I I would say we're like in the 70 percentile. 70. Uh, Drew's Drew's a podcast man. He probably knows best. What's your guess, guess, Drew? I believe that we certainly have people that listen to us. Uh, we are in the top one percent of podcasts as far as listenership is concerned, and you know wow. that's uh, that's a lot of podcasts out there. <laughs> <laughs> Means for for every cosmic crit, there's like thirty podcasts with zero listens. I think you, gotta, you remember, you remember or that ninety nine uh, other podcasts with zero listens. Remember least. that that statistic from uh, from Hitchhiker's <clears throat> Guide where the average population of the universe is zero because there's an infinite number of populated planets and an infinite number of unpopulated planets. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was about to say, but we are technically in the top percent, uh, one percent. We're not in the top you know, like point zero five, mind you. But uh, it feels good uh, to share that with you. So great work, guys. Um, that's fun to know. Yeah, that's why I brought it up. Uh, enough tooting our own horn, blowing smoke mm. up the old flagpole here tonight. We got to get to this week's episode and do that. We got to talk about a recap of last week from none other than Sprutz Merla find out what happened last time on Cosmic Crit. I hate to say I told me so, but I told me so. Things keep getting stranger and stranger and there's no signs of slowing down. Echo had to walk through this wellspring of memories, having to sacrifice something. We don't know what yet, and I'm worried we're only going to find out at the worst possible moment. We stumbled across a quaint-looking oasis in the desert, but it turned out to be filled with some sort of viper and even the pools themselves could be dangerous and addictive and it turns out that to power this crowd of hylax after all this pedalic about getting it and then getting it safely we'll power this baby up to finally take the fight to the swarm and it requires a sacrifice me z and trust signed up what the sacrifice is specifically what it requires <laughs> What power in this thing even means? I got no idea. I hate having no idea. But if it means finally stopping the swarm, there ain't no cost too high. Indeed, as you guys move forward, your hands outstretched, you see Trest, your former chaplain of the 5th Battalion there on Suskelin, seemingly saying, um, you know, I, I, by trying, I, I understand. And you feel perhaps months of the, the pain and suffering flowing through your connection to the hive uh, or to the mind linked Bootsy. Uh, they run off seemingly, uh, from what you remember, to save your life. And this scene kind of slowly fades away here back into the darkness. But you all, having seen the carnage back. On the beginning of the war on Susculin, uh, it has indeed left you scarred mentally. Feeling these experiences and the blows, experiencing the death around you uh, has left you mentally exhausted. And you guys, the three of you take a minus three penalty to will saving throws. Yippee. What what kind of penalty is that? Uh, minus three. <laughs> and it's 
permanence. Oh. To will Permanent? saving throws. Permanent. Like is that a sort of like a curse effect or it is not something you can remove. It's a sacrifice. It's what we had to sacrifice to do this, I guess. Pretty happy Devosho to go forward with this sacrifice, right? Oh, uh but our <laughs> your but but our cleric did. That's awful. <laughs> Well, this is just to the saves, not to... Oh, oh, right, stat. right. Not to wisdom. Not to wisdom. No, but will saves are still... Uh, that's still throws. bad. My will saves are are kind of garbage as it is, so... Well, if I if Devonstra took a minus three to will, he pretty much had a, a plus zero, which is not <laughs> awesome to have at level nine. Not ideal. But the three of you feel your connection to the artifact, the crown growing as it becomes empowered... And throw this thing into a dumpster when we get back to Suscalon. <laughs> uh, oh, no, I'm turning it into a bowling trophy. Right, exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna, like, give it to some jerk. Tell him to put it in his bar. Oh, we could give it to uh, what's his face as punishment. Low twerk. Yep. <laughs> you want go. a magical crown? Uh, after you take the minus three to will saves. After transporting yourself away from these memories, uh, you are aware of the crown's presence, um, and now you guys uh, can see the walls of the crevice. You're you're back together uh, once again. You're floating, surrounded by by nothingness, but still you can kind of sense the crevice around you, and as you are reunited. Uh, you can feel the sands above falling down on you and perhaps the walls closing in at a rapid pace, uh, threatening to bury you alive. Seems like you're back in kind of a representation of the mindscape here. Hylax's comet appears above you, showing that you can make it out of this hole without being swallowed. But to do so, it will take either an acrobatics check to fly out, those of you with capability, or an athletics to climb out of the sand. Let's make those rules now. Uh, Patrick. Yeah. Devasho has a burrow speed. Can I just burrow out? Uh, no. Okay. Because right now, I mean, it, it feels like you're perhaps a impossible amount of distance away. Um, oh, I mean, you can burrow through some of the sands, but to keep keep up your strength in doing so, you will need to make that athletics check. Wait, are we all in this now? Because I thought Devasho and... Oh, this is everybody. Okay. Getting out of here. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Multiple natural ones to start uh, us off. Uh, is the acrobatics easier with a, an ability to fly or... I'll, I'll pull back the curtain. They're both DC okay. 28. Okay. So, hold, hold on. Can oh, you only do sake. acrobatics <laughs> if you have the ability to fly, or is that uh, correct? Oh, uh, so I need to reroll. So... I'm sorry. Yeah, same. No, we'll just use your dice roll number. What's your uh, uh, 30, 31 bonus? then? <laughs> yeah, so better. Or no, just about the same. Uh, what did you roll, um, Sprouts? Uh, I rolled a 15. What's your athletics bonus? Minus one. <laughs> Oh, no. Wow. (laughs) So, hey, we've got a success. Echo 7, you pull yourself out of the connection rift as the sands uh, almost threaten to choke you. The crown of Hylax rotating. uh, Oh, maybe it's back on your head. Um, But, yeah, the, the rest of you, you are just swallowed up by this morass of sand as you look back at 07 the crevasse looks no more than a few feet across uh, a few inches wide and you see behind you the mist kind of clearing and the sidewinder coming to to pick you up uh, everyone else here rigor mortis style you are able to pull yourself out of the ground um half buried under the sand you know it it does look like a zombie apocalypse here um but you are able to burrow out claw your way out and kind of burst through the cakey silvery sand bed here um but doing so makes you fatigued Um, if you were if you were fatigued before this uh, from one of the other connection rifts, then you are exhausted. Was anybody um, 
already fatigued? No. I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, I was not. I'll say that. I think there was just the one um, one event last week that uh, that could have made it. Maybe. We do have those hypo pens, right? Would that help? No? Um, yeah, well, so you... I think the only thing I have is the intellect uh, drop. You're gifted some, um, basically the equivalent of hypo pens from uh, Seneca uh, last week, maybe? And yeah. those there are... <laughs> okay, four purple... Uh, four black and two white hypo pens. I believe one works like lesser uh, can um, remove condition um, and one lesser restoration. Take a look at those. Um, purple is remove condition. So I think that's what you're looking for here. Uh, the black, black is lesser restoration and... Oh, uh, the two white ones are the highest level ones. They work like remove affliction. But the purple would get rid of fatigue, right? Uh, let's take a look. Mm, remove condition lesser only does shaken, sickened, and staggered, unfortunately. Let's take a look at uh, lesser restoration. Do, do, do. Um, lesser restoration, so that's the one you're going to want to use. Um, the two black ones can remove fatigue. So if you want to use those, you're free to do so. Sorry, four black? Uh, there are two black. Um, I put it in your guys' loot pile from... Yeah, loot pile says week. four black. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> oh, let me see if I, did I copy that incorrect. Uh, nope, there, there are four. You want to use them all up now? I don't know. What do y'all think? Because fatigue is like negative one to everything, but there are worse conditions, so... Thoughts? Did it remove um, our, our would it remove multiple conditions or is it just one condition per what other conditions Sarah? are you under? I think it's just one, right? I'm not under any conditions. I'm just saying like if, if we got suddenly under other conditions, would that just remove one condition or would it remove multiple conditions because it it's powerful enough? Any magical effects that target ability scores and it also heals damage from ability scores. So it does a, f- a few things actually. Oh, okay. So maybe we should save it until we're under more distress. I mean, the problem is that we're going to face harder challenges that are going to that having ability score extras are going to help. But I don't know. But the only the only thing I think echoes down right now is is the impact to Ent, which is not going to help or we're not going to hurt him too much. So I think he's good. But you guys with the the will saves and the the. Well, the we'll fatigue is a permanent thing, so yeah, so we'll uh, um, fatigue thing. We'll just hold off then. So we'll we'll hold on to our hypo pens, but don't forget that they're they're available if if we start to feel like we really need to use yeah. one. Fatigue is one of the few things that um, does not affect your will saves as far as uh, some conditions go. So and the, the the those pens mimic uh, Lester restoration. The black ones do. Yes. No. No. The the purple ones do black ones um, or remove condition right or i have those backwards yes but you have four of each so oh okay actually you know what i have uh remove condition lesser i can just spam that real quick uh no i think we need lesser restoration is what we're to remove we'll, fatigue for, oh. to remove fatigue yeah oh well then i'm just doing it on myself sorry <laughs> gang <laughs> that's okay that's, that, that's that's not true I'll, I'll do it on everybody uh that's four castings okay. already all right uh if you do have um ability score damage temporary ability score damage um yeah you can roll a d4 it will remove, that. remove one of them yeah so who uh, and it's four castings are you casting this who is who's Every, everyone that's fatigued so yeah, that's, people okay, who are just fatigued, fatigued. yeah mind. yeah no, I'm not. I'm not doing it on people who aren't fatigued. Drew. Yeah, <laughs> Echo score Seven. Damage. Yeah, get funny. out of here with your ability <laughs> score damage. <laughs> Sorry, my int is my int is low. I don't think so straight anymore. It's actually, permanent. I've got, I've got a. I've got a spare. I've got a spare one. You know what? You get one too. No, I, I actually seven. don't. I, I think it's like a will save thing. I don't think I can actually get rid of it right now. Okay. It is. Yes. It, yeah. Any 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 ability negative we're taking from the crown stuff. 
There is no... As, as of right now, we are not aware of any spell, ability, resource that will heal that. So I want to make that crystal. Mm-hmm. So Devasha won't go on any of those things. Yeah, if you're talking about your... You, you don't have any damage, Drew, to your uh, intelligence-based checks. You just have a minus six penalty. It cannot be removed by any means, it says here in the book. I love it. All right. Uh, but the artifact has now been enhanced and strengthened, uh, empowered, if you will, twice. And I was thinking about changing what the book says this does, but I think uh, I think you'll appreciate it because this is something you already use. Uh, now, uh, whoever wears the crown three times per day can cast Lesser Battle Mind Link uh, as a spell-like ability, so just like how Trest casts the ability. Uh, but you can target one additional creature for every two champions who sacrificed to gain this power. So now that can target three people three times per day. So basically, you should just use that whenever you can. <laughs> yeah, and I think we did agree that the crown wearer should be an operative because the other power we gained was the ability to... Uh, auto was it auto aid reaction aid reaction aid and now this one is a battle mind link which is obviously very nice for those with high initiative to pair with someone who maybe has butt for initiative yeah. so uh i i don't know if we have any feelings whether it's zinnia or tr- or not trust i'm sorry zinnia or sprouts um, should be one of the two what do you guys think well, we have different skills, so I guess it's a matter of which skills do you think we'll need to use here, right? Are, are we anticipating more charisma-based skills or more int-based skills? That's really what it comes down to, right? Last week, did you use a um, did you use it to boost an intimidate check? I think, I think. so. Yeah, I think maybe Devasho's intimidate was was um, aided after the fact. I'm going to go ahead and bet there are not a lot of computers and uh, engineering in this place. I could be wrong, but I mean, they, they've surprised yeah. us before already. I would say that mysticism is probably one that we want to to be able to, to have a bonus for. Yeah, it's sounding more and more like Sprouts. So I would give it to Sprouts. It'll probably be a necklace around his neck. But yeah. <laughs> we can also... I mean, it just takes like one declaration to take it from one person's head to another. So if we get into a situation where we think it's, I mean, I don't, yeah, it does, there's no sure. time limit needed to like it align like the crown. Uh, yeah, it'll be like a standard action toss it to someone's head. Yeah. Um, yeah. At this be- point, it is uh, giving off light, um, a little bit of light. And you hear as it goes around your head, Sprouts Marlow, a chorus of what sounds like sheering kind of droning hums rising and, and lowering as you get that new power. Um, tries to change the Spotify setting. <laughs> it gets louder. <laughs> it gets more intense. Uh, what's Patrick? What is it officially called? The spell? Uh, yes. The spell is Lesser Battle uh, Mind. Battle Mind link battle mind one word and then like um it's it's what um i I think it was cast on me once before but what tress has access to now Uh, i say that because someone else besides tress can also cast it but at this point if trust and the crown bearer uses it technically everyone could be under the effect of that (laughs) spell (laughs) Um, we're all linked or dress can like you know retrain if they don't want that spell anymore. Anyway, uh, Seneca welcomes you back to Signwinder and says, I, "I'm sorry, I, I could not take you all in closer. That that connection rift. It, it's a place I've, I've never been to before and never seen anything escape its grasp. And I've survived too long to allow myself to be captured by it now. I I am sorry for my cowardice. I I have something a token." I wanted you to take as a, as a way of an apology. It's something I gained from my time spent learning with the Salarian monks in the Adari monastery. And I think that you will make better use of it than, than I. Uh, she kind of reaches underneath her armor and from around her neck pulls a necklace with you see some loose kind of like bone trinkets on it, but uh, string strung between them. 
uh, are two large glowing orbs uh, that you can recognize as the equivalent of Mark II plasma beads. Mark II plasma beads. Two of them. Uh, which, I can tell you, uh, were kind of like a f- fireball grenade. <laughs> uh, this is kind of like a... Um, sort of like that old necklace of fireballs. Of- Necklace of fireballs, but there's not like a crazy negative. Um, <laughs> you can't have your head blown off if somebody shoots you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, you can just throw it and it works kind of like a a plasma bomb that goes off. And it's a level nine item. Uh, 5d6 uh, electricity and flame damage in a 20 foot radius. So it's pretty serial. Pretty serious cereal, guys. Um, great. As you guys get back on the this sidewinder, you know you've got. Uh, does someone want to roll a D four for me? Mm-hmm. I'll See do it. Long. See how long it takes to get to the next oh. locale. Ooh. All right. Well, Miles will do it. <laughs> it's a fast one. Miles rolled the one, so two hours to get to the next location. Does anybody want to take a ten minute rest? Uh. I mean, Devasha, I don't know if Devasha is going to take a mechanical 10 minute rest, but he's going to clean the sand out of his armor since he's probably got an extra 40 pounds in sand <laughs> sloshing around somewhere. Oh, oh, yeah. That's silvery sand. It, could, it gets everywhere. It's like it glitter. Ever, yeah. Oh, it's the worst. <laughs> Under chitin and in mandible. Oh, yep. Yep. It's not good. Anybody Get the hygiene kit, scrubbing some, scrubbing the chitin. Uh, Echo Seven might uh, take take some paces just to charge up some stuff. Just keep moving to charge up uh, batteries. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take a resolve. Actually, spend a resolve. All right. I, I don't know. I don't know if anybody wants to tell, but I mean, Devasha didn't see any of the stuff. So I think while we're all just sitting around, he might even feel casually have asked what you guys saw. I don't know if anybody wants to tell him or shrug. Oh, on Sus- and Susquehan. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, well I'll, in, I'll, in the when when you went to be sacrificed, I mean, I imagine he's just cleaning his equipment, and he's like, "So we've done two of these sacrifices, I, but I have no idea what you are, what is happening, or what is even being seen. What what happened in that crevasse?" I mean, Zenia will gladly uh, uh, explain what she can or uh, what she's able to uh, put into words, I guess. But I think all of this is very confusing to her. Uh, because it's all in our heads, right? Yeah, I, <laughs> is I've this got really a, happening? I've got a spell for this. Mind link. <laughs> it's, it's like, I don't want to talk about it right now. Spell. <laughs> if I take a minus three to wisdom because of this, Jabert. I was about to say, if you retroactively, us, Tyler. if you retroactively want to be a part of the group, go right ahead, Tyler. No, I don't. <laughs> no, you can get I, you can get the images and like the emotions that uh, that trust perhaps had to go through there going back to that same battlefield um you know about a year later but uh yeah um for the most part um perhaps what's what's weighing on devasho's mind is one of these two other locales or places where echo seven said that they saw you indeed um making making a stand and uh uh, Seneca will, will kind of call you guys down to your chamber uh, right before you set off and activate the sand powered overlay the best guess she has at the map of the mindscape and says that there are two more locations with which you you know described from your visions Echo 7 um, and I, I suggest we make for here the map shows what looks like various modern buildings and miles of what looks like an amalgam city wood and steel and glass uh, rock and stone and, and what looks like the remains of skyscrapers, large warehouses uh, the, the swarm here has built a simulacrum of all the civilizations it's conquered where it, it tests out battle tactics and chances are there'll be some kind of swarm presence there but it, whatever it is will probably help you empower that crown of yours, that weapon further well then it seems that that's where we need to go, Pilgrim that is where you saw Sprouts Marlowe and Zinnia making like a last stand kind of thing against a number of, of swarm components who were like firing off into the distance. 
um, if that's where you want to go. Two hours later, bingo, bango, you're there. Ha ha. Just kidding. As uh, about two hours where you think you might be getting to this ruinous location, Sprout Seneca will call you up to the, the top deck and say, uh, I'm sorry. Sprout Toronto, I, I need your assistance. Something, something is wrong. They'll, What's the uh, matter? They'll allow you to look over the map and then go back up to the top deck and look over the the kind of sands in front of you. Um, on the this, what am I looking at here? This readout, this map where previously you saw the oasis and the connection rift and the Hylaxian refuge far in the distance, um, they are all gone. None of the map markers are there anymore. And um, Seneca says, I. We seem to have gone off course, and I'm wondering if the Mindscape is trying to make a play at, at getting us lost. The Mindscape itself is trying to get us lost? If it knows of, of your presence, it might be actively trying to obfuscate where where we can get to next. Hmm. Is there any way we can fool the Mindscape? Not let it know where we're, where we're actually trying to go. Oh, we'd have to know where we're going to begin with. And right now we're way off track. Uh, do, 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 do you guys can make a survival check to get back on track and uh, up to a couple people can can aid and or, or if anybody has any ideas on how to help navigate the. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think and I was trying to think well in character, but um, so. The mindscape itself is actively trying to sabotage us by getting us lost. Perhaps. And, I mean, that's Seneca's best guest. Yes. Okay. Is there is there a way that maybe Sprouts can try to glean what the actual problem is? Like, would would um, I guess glimpse of, glimpse of truth wouldn't help. No, I think we're just. I think it's like one of those things where they just you know moved a few dunes to try to point us south instead of going north yeah and I mean, now we're just trying to get back pointed to the correct direction first and then if we can combat them combat the mindscape from trying to reorient disorient us again then well, and, and that's what that's what i'm trying to figure out because if we know where we're supposed to go then the mindscape can change itself can sure can, can echo use anything from the visions to identify where we might be going or I know he just saw flashes, but just anything to help mm. us in, in navigating. Um, make me a mysticism check, Drew. Oh God. This hey, is that's, that's not intelligence based. You're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got mysticism coming out of every pore. It's only a 13. <laughs> oh, and you have a minus one. Yes, uh, you're, you're not terribly sure if, if that will help. There wasn't a lot of, contextual information it, it, it was like you were there you know in the midst of the ruins not seeing it from the outside but good try good try um does anybody else want to roll survival to try and aid uh i can roll I, survival i can roll survival as well well who, who I wants a, i have a 16 i don't know what everybody's bonus is i have a 14 i have a 14 so let's just auto aid um Sprouts, then. Sprouts, Marlow, go ahead and make me that roll. 26. Oh, no. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, roll, make, roll terribly. Maybe make me two more rolls. <laughs> I think if, if all of our bonuses are equally that close, it's almost pro- it's probably better just to roll separately. Yeah, uh, I think so, too. Nope. It's a one person per hour thing, because an hour passes and you are no... Oh sooner back on track now if somebody else wants to take over you can but yes and he can do the she wants to i can try <laughs> with with one less <laughs> the same thing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you did one better on the dice Maybe worse <laughs> yeah, right, no, no well worse then, uh, that, that is true well then trust will t- try it for the third hour trust will, will try it for the first, third hour this is a 26 i'm gonna eat a hat <laughs> I, I call sandwiches hats, by the way. <laughs> well, well, I'll hold you to that on Thursday. I'm going to eat a ham hat. <laughs> Mayo and mustard. Live on Thursday nights. Watch Drew eat a hat. I mean, that's a real expression. You'll know that, right? No, it's not. 
Don't yes, I'll eat yeah, my I'll hat. Eat hat. Yeah. Yes, I'll eat my hat. Hundred percent a real expression, Tyler. Yeah, it's a real expression. You people from the south can't make things up and then. Ah, uh, hey, twenty-two. <laughs> that's real. Whistle, oh, right. that's, no. uh, hey, Tyler, I'll, I'll have you know that's a western expression, not a southern yeah. expression. Eight See, now the- you're making up places and expressions. So eight, <laughs> nine, and ten on the dice. Not going to do it. Um, All right, as you guys try again. <laughs> Oh no, as as we get to the third hour, fifth hour, um, battle in the wastes there as you're navigating, you get a call from the top deck, and you hear Pirate Anda say, Arr, enemies inbound. Captain, we're in trouble. You guys can get up to the top deck here and place yourselves where you would like on the sidewinder map, wherever you want here on the, the, te- the main deck. As you all get up there. Uh, do, do we know which which way the enemies are coming from? The port side, unless I'm looking at the starboard side. Port is left, so yes. Okay, this this way. The port here. side of the ship. Okay, you all in the sky can see a number of flying figures making their way to the barge. Uh, let's dive into initiative turn order here. Uh, can I use my little battle mind link thing? <laughs> Uh, yes, yes. You have time to to do that. All uh, right. So that's so, just me and Drew, or me, me and uh, Echo, or is that uh, you can pick up to two people? Okay. Um, yeah, you can pick three people, right? Uh, total, yes. So you pick two other. Well, can you cast it on two other people besides yourself, or is it? Yeah, yeah. It's just. Oh. Just, oh. Okay. So uh, it doesn't have to include you. Let's see. Who needs help with initiative? Devasho. All right, so I'll do. Devasho has a plus one to initiative. All right, uh, Devasho and Echo. Awesome, uh, Zinnia, you're with me. All right, cool. And we get a plus. <laughs> you get a plus two on the initiative as well. Oh my gosh, did I roll a nineteen? I did. So we can use my roll, right? <laughs> yep. With Ooh. lesser battle mind link, those that are in the the link. Uh, roll initiative, use the higher die result, but uh, get your own modifiers, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, so, so I, I rolled a 14, so that would make it a, a 16 for us, is that right? And then we each use our mod- our own modifiers yes. on top of that? Yep. Okay. Uh, I rolled a, a 9. I rolled yep. an 11. but And I rolled a 19, so you so guys are going to my 19 in your Correct. Uh, so that is... 19 plus 9, that's 28. I have a 29.1. <laughs> and I, with the lowest initiative, get no help at all. <laughs> but that's okay. I'm happy to roll the 19. That's, you get, I mean, really. You get plus 2. You get plus oh, 2. That's true. I do get plus 2. Yeah. I mean, we're all, we all get plus 2, but. Oh, then mine, clear, the, the, the mine's a 31. <laughs> nice. I am, and I'm way down at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> with a 18. Mm. Oh, it looks like Echo 7. Did you add your bonus in? Uh, so it's... Uh, no. so I rolled before I knew that I got the extra, so it's... Uh, oh, yeah. 19. Uh, so, yeah, so it's, uh, it should be also pretty pretty high. 19 plus yeah. 9, so that should be 28 plus yeah. 2. You can change it. You 30. can just click on the number on the turn order and change it, Drew. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's changed. It's all good. Ooh, there's some high rolls. Uh... Yeah, so Sprouts. Uh, hold, hold on. Echo should be 30 no, should be, right now, right? Yeah, you should, should be 30. Ah, oh, wow. So you have a plus, what, like 10 bonus? Plus yeah. 9. Plus 9, plus 2 from the mind link thing, and yes, then correct. a 19 sure. on the die. So. Oh, this is the highest uh, turn order I think we've we've seen yeah. yet with a couple of 30, a 31 here. Um, I'm going to roll into it, but I'm not going to, I'm going to realize, let you guys know, I'm probably not going to be that high. Bloop. If I roll 20. All right, 16 on the dice. Uh, you see a number of flying figures that are going to spend uh, this kind of like surprise round getting within a range of you. Uh, but they will not be going first here. Right off the port side. Oh, some some figures uh, you think you've seen before. Oh, these are what look like rocky looking silvery sand creations formed into giant swarm escachides. Oh, oh boy. Good. Everyone's good, favorite. Good, good, They're flying maybe about 10 feet apart or so at different heights coming up to the barge. And 
yeah, let's get into this combat as first in the turn order. A Sprouts Marlowe. All right. So uh, Sprouts is going to pop up a little bit. Uh, pr- getting, getting almost right next to Devasho. Mm-hmm. Yeah, going middle, about halfway. Middle of the barge. Yeah, but middle of the barge with the understanding that, that he will be scooped up by Echo when he comes. Um, if he comes this way. And he is going to take a shot. See how many of these guys are. There's one, two, three, four. Uh, there is one directly in front of Sprouts. So he is going to take a shot at that creature. Cool. What's the range on your, your auto pistol? Uh, 60. I think you might just have that. If they're a little bit off uh, the deck, yeah, yeah. go right ahead and shoot. Yeah, it's about, yeah, it should be right. Uh, all right. That is CR5 or lower, so I assume that does not hit. Yuck. Uh, 29 to hit. Oh, actually, I, I guess I should probably check. No, that is a, a <laughs> miss on the trick. Hit on them, though. Yes, uh, 12 points. Okay, boom. First point of damage. And Echo 7, you are indeed right after your mind linked little buddy. Uh, Echo 7's going to target the same one and heavy fire. Ooh, from way back on the starboard side of the vessel. Yes. Boy, I wish you had given up that instead of your memories of your old crew. <laughs> uh, that is okay. a 23 to hit. Uh, against EAC, that is a hit. Yes, so that is going to be 41 points of damage. I got to make sure Ooh-hoo. I remember my, my new roll. bonus. <laughs> that looks right yes, to me. Yes, 41. Whoa! New weapons here. Who dis? This is... Uh, most damage you've done? I think so. In a single hit. Not without a crit, yeah. No. Boy, howdy. That'll wake you up in the morning. That guy is bloodied after that. That's a big heal. Yeah. Very nice. Zinnia, on to you. All right. Zinnia is also going to target the southernmost uh, Eskachide. Before I do that, no. can she try to identify it? That one's my favorite, Rebecca. Uh, yes, please do. Um, mind you. Sorry. Um, uh, these these are living, um, so I, I don't think it matters. Uh, it, it would be a, a mysticism normally to to figure these guys out. Gotcha. All right. You, so being a biohacker, that's a twenty six to identify. Uh, that is a success and enough to know uh, one pertinent piece of information sure. about these mindscape escachides. I just want to point out that was a two on the dice. She still got a twenty six. Yeah, that's I'll do it. Offers. <laughs> Uh, these are CR six creatures. Uh, they are they are evil. What would you like to know about them? CR six creature. All right. Um, are these the ones that ha- that stab? I need to start <laughs> writing you wanna, down. You want to know about their attacks? Uh, yeah. Let me have their attacks. Oh, they have a special ability with their melee slam called Pummel, and Pummel, you remember, uh, can uh, push creatures. Uh, back into a certain direction. Okay, so they're not they're they're not the impalers. That's somebody else. Okay. Uh, no, no, these guys have very long, kind of rhino-like snouts, and they definitely will try to impale you uh, with their attack. Um, but their well, it, it, their main attack is a slam that does uh, bludgeoning damage. All right. Seems, seems like the perfect opportunity to get knocked off the side of the ship. Yep. All right. So uh, Zinnia is going to keep her distance. Um, my laser pistol has a range of 90 feet. So I do believe that they are within range of my pistol. Uh, so she is going to take a shot. Taking 10 on the trick attack. So that mm-hmm. gives me a 10 or lower on the trick, but only a 15 on the attack. Ooh, two on the dice. Want to book reroll? Mm, no. Then we are on, as, as I missed, to Devasho. Patrick, uh, did I have time? Ta- did Devasho have time to form the shield and pull a weapon? Or- I think so. You you guys okay. had to come from below deck to uh, to get up here. So if you hear you're about to be attacked, anybody can have a weapon out. Good. We're going to. Oh, boy. It's one of those times where I forget that Devasho has no gun. You've got a singing um, disc, my friend. What, what, what could be uh, better or worse than that? Uh, many things. Um, mm-hmm. Mostly it's the range increment on it is it is not made for long distance fire such as this. Um, I 
guess Devasho is going to move up as a standard, as a move action, and then I'll use my standard action to wreath myself, myself in flame. Oh, right. Get you catching a little heat as we move on to Trist. Oh, um, not them. Not them. I rolled oh, a 16 boy. on my initiative <laughs> dice roll, but uh, Trest's still making it with an 18. Oh, man. Looks like I'm going to have to cast a spell here. Um, I am going to call forth the power of the natural world and uh, generate large spikes all over my body as my chitin hardens into a thick shell. I'm casting oh. Defrex Hardiness. All right. Uh, any move action? Um, uh, I... I, I I do not remember these guys to be ranged or casters of any sort. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I might go ahead and just sort of uh, empower my blade and prepare prepare to strike, prepare to be boarded. Uh, right, uh, that's a move action to empower. Yes, correct. What level spell are you using? Uh, level three. All right. All right, these guys are going to. Uh, charge in on our friends on the front line, Trest and Devasho. Devasho, do you want to make a attack of opportunity against this one? Charging in on you. I'm about to smack an Echkatad. Ooh, yes, you are. 32 is a hit. 22 points of damage. Okay, so first one on this guy. And his weakened buddy also going to come on in. And let's do a couple attacks against... Trest first. Oh, one is a hit and one is a miss. A four on dice and a 16 on the other. Uh, let's do some bludgeoning damage. Uh, 20 points of bludgeoning damage. And this guy is indeed going to knock you back, pummel you about five feet backward with that uh, attack, I believe. Right, what, what's your, well, take- I, actually, I should ask, what is your armor class? Because he has a hit. KAC plus four. Uh, my KAC is 27. Uh, yeah, okay, so yes, he did. did okay, so pummel. he would take nine points of piercing for hitting me. Excellent. I've marked that. And Devasha, these two attacking you are going to do the same thing. A couple of attacks trying to push you back. Oh, a four and a seven on the dice. I don't think either of these hit. But I imagine... Standing close to you, they, are they taking fire damage now? Uh, no, if they they would have taken some if they hit me. Oh, okay. But I believe, um, let me just double check here. Any creature that starts its turn adjacent to me is going to take the damage. Okay, so let's go on to turn number two with uh, Sprouts Marla. They are they are on the deck. They're just like hovering right above the ground here. I guess I can kind of. Uh, I guess I could push uh, down on the deck. They've got enough room. <laughs> Which means if I wanted to hit the same guy that I hit last time, I'd need to move since Devasho is in the way. Providing a little bit of cover for sure. Yeah, so he's going to target that the this, this same creature that he targeted last time and moved uh, kind of close to a little more uh, southern up uh, down the ship close to the, the stairs okay. and uh, is going to, yeah, I should have an actual sight for that guy. Um, take a shot. Let's see our seven or lower. And Trick. 18 to hit. Against KAC? Hmm. Oh, that's a miss. Yeah, I figured. Oh, no. Uh, Echo 7, on to you. Uh, same dude, most southernmost. Uh, oh, yeah, the weakened, weakened one. I guess looking at this map, the northernmost. But <laughs> uh, I'm going to do another heavy fire. It's a 24 to hit. Oh, that is a hit, even shooting through your buddy here. 25 points of damage. 25. Ooh, he is still up though after that barrage. Oh yeah, two minimum damage rolls on that attack. Let's see, what's the opposite of last time? Okay, Zinnia, back to you. 
All right, Zenia is going to stay roughly where she is. Um, oh. She is hovering about 10 feet in the air, uh, by the way, just by default, typically. Mm -hmm. uh, she is going to uh, try to take a shot at this other one again. Let's see if it hits. Probably not. That's a 17 on the attack. Um, with the trick, you're making it flat-footed, correct? Yeah. Uh, that is just a hit. Oh, really? I'm surprised. Well, that that then does 29. EAC? Yeah, EAC. Yep. So that does a total of 29 damage with the trick and the attack. Okay, that one is dead. First dead Woohoo. here. Um, Zinnia helped. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Finishing it <laughs> off. That happen very often. Killed stealing. Devasha, we're back to you. One of them has been taken out by some heavy fire and yeah. some friend fire. Zinnia or uh, Rebecca, does Zinnia have any uh, stamina point damage? No. Okay. Cool. Uh, then if it's Devasha's turn, I am think we're just going to double attack this other one threatening him D -d -d double attack attack the first Does it, uh, that's gonna hit oh yeah based on what I've heard 23 points of damage okay okay um we forget how to do math uh he's bloody okay good oh -ho! all right First one was good, so the second one's good too. 21, a little bit less. Oh, yeah, but still putting on a number of damage. This guy's not looking too good after that. Um, it's my whole turn. Da, 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 da. I, can, I can do this, math. I trust in you, Patrick. All right, uh, bringing us back to Trest here. All right, I'm going to take a step forward uh, up to the one that's sort of the highest or the closest to the bow of the ship. Mm -hmm. And... I'm going to swing my mighty S word. <laughs> my dog didn't like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Doug loves that joke. <laughs> 33 to hit. Ooh. Oh boy. Yes. The 29 points of damage. Okay. Oh, all right. This one, not bloody yet, but that is a major, major hit from. Wait, or did you attack the one that no, had this one? Oh, okay. So that one had not taken any damage. Sorry. Uh, this one hadn't either, right? Uh, well, it took damage from your deflex hardness. Oh, I, I assumed it was this one up here. Uh, you want to take that back and just do it against the one that had it? Yeah. I have, yeah. I have that number recorded here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm resetting it. Uh, maybe they'll take some more this turn because they're going to both attack you. And I think both singly. So if the first one pushes Actually, me back, can the second one not hit me? No, let's actually, uh, we'll, we'll have them, them move and try and knock you off the ship. Uh, you can make an attack of opportunity against uh, one of them here. Okay. Uh, we'll say the one that I've attacked before. 29 Ooh. to hit. Oh, that's a hit. 34 points of damage. Oh, no, 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 no. What did I chop, do? Chop, <laughs> chop, chop. Okay. Uh, that's very Patrick, good. how how is that one moving? Because I threaten. Flutter over him. Oh, okay, okay. Then never mind. Um, they have a 20-foot fly speed. All right, so they're both going to make their single attacks since they can do that. I mean, he, he started from right here, though, which was a threatened square. So if he's moving, he's is provoking, right? Um, moving out of... Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Um, they were... No, they were, they were on the deck. Uh, you can make an attack of opportunity to debash. Okay. Help me, Devasho. Don't let him push me into the sand ocean. <laughs> Jabert, if I did a full attack the round before, am I still taking a negative to the reaction? Yeah. Okay. okay. Is that a Pathfinder 1 thing? I think so. 24. Oh, that one's dead before he can get in this attack. Hey. <laughs> but he, he was definitely the one that rolled the 5 on the dice. So this other one pushes you back 5 feet. Oh no! Does another twenty points of damage, taking nine himself. Yes. Oh boy. Okay. Um, and this one is going to. Oh, hmm. Seeing you obviously took your attack of opportunity, Debasha is just going to fly around the other side of you, and uh, uh, make does, that does it also take damage because of Debasha being on fire? Uh, yeah. What is that damage, Tyler? 
That is equal to half my Solarian level. And my Solarian level is, of course, uh, 20. So you're going to take 10. <laughs> I've written No, four. my Solarian level is 9. So you're going to take... That's what I'm uh, taking. Four. Um, Okili Dokli. What is your KAC? 30. 30. 30 30 um 3030 uh that is i i've i've missed several the seven on a d20 which will not hit bounces right off of your troxy and hide which brings us to top of turn three and sprouts marlow all right so sprouts notices that he has a new friend in he's front pretty, of him. He's that's pretty close. Uh, he's a little close. Attacking old, old Devashi. Uh, so he's going to attack back. He's going to uh, target this fellow and move back about a few feet and take his shot. That's a CR 17 or lower. Hit and tricked. Ooh, All ooh. right. For a total of 20, uh, 39 points of damage. Oh, that one's dead. Yeah, uh, we've got a single Inskachide left, and Echo Seven. It's your turn. I was going to take two shots because I wanted to take two shots, but I think I'm just going to, since we only have the one left, heavy fire. Okay, it's a twenty-one to hit against EAC is a hit. Yes, thirty-five points of damage. Oakley Duckley, that one is bloody as well. Now, Zinnia, we're on to you. All right, Zinnia is going to fly up just a bit to get a clear line of sight. I'm going to stand sort of right next to Echo because I think there's a mast in the middle of the ship here. There, there is a giant mast. Yes. So getting around that, you can see the the last escachide by trest by the castle. What would you like? All right, I am going to take a shot with my laser pistol. Ooh. Oh, and it hits, I believe. So that's oh, a yeah. CR 12 or lower on the trick and a 31 to attack. Tricked and hit. So a total of 18 plus 14. What's that? <laughs> if, <laughs> if you got to ask me, I'm going 32. to the calculator. 32. Uh, that's 32 <laughs> points of damage against what he already had. Oh, uh, Rebecca, so- re- remember, we have to visualize it in the way that we have learned to teach our children. <sighs> He's yeah, so I have a close. third grader that could add that faster than me. <laughs> he is uh, still up, though, as we go on to Dimasho. Is it turn three? It is. <gasps> hmm, let's do something new. Oh. Whoa, powers. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't think this costs me an action. I guess it's just something I do. Um, but I can use solar acceleration as a zenith. And it says when I'm fully photo attuned i can make a full attack as a standard action in addition allies within 30 feet of me are affected by haste for one minute. so all right i'm gonna use a move action to come up to this uh evil escachide and then i can still make a full attack as a standard action oh two chances to turn this combat off <laughs> make those attack rolls uh number one uh, that's a hit for 22 points of damage. That's all you needed. That's a single one. All right. Yay. Uh, and we are we are out of combat. Zinnia just like hoping, hoping rushes over to a body to try to grab a sample before it, you know, dusts away or whatever it does here. <laughs> Make me a mysticism check. It's a 24. Um, the... Uh, the captain Seneca will come down after, you know, handing the the wheel off, and say it's like, you 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 have to believe that what you have in front of you is is real, as real as your own flesh and blood, in order for it to last. And she'll do some mumbo jumbo where she like pulls the the head off of this escachide and kind of like self realizes it in in its in her uh, two good hands here. So it's, uh, it's, that is the only way to make it make it last here. She'll hand it over to you. So I got a sample? Uh, yeah, sure. That's exciting. It's like Peter Pan. You have you, to believe in the fairies. You got a souvenir from this, this combat. <laughs> Fun. Um, yeah. 
Um, trying to get to the ruins, though, as you get back on track, though, within the next hour, the Sidewinder seems to be getting closer and closer to what looks like a massive wall of sand and stormy weather instead. Echo 7, this is the vision you had in the Hylexian Refuge gifting chamber, seeing Devasho standing resolute in front of this sandstorm. And Seneca says, it looks like we're way off track if we, if we got here. Instead, uh, it, it's no good. There's there's no escaping or getting around this barrier. You might you might need to interact with it with your crown before it it lets us go. Indeed, the barge will kind of um, slow down at the edge of what I mean. Looking up, you just see hundreds and hundreds of feet of um, what seems like just a wall of, of a sandstorm. Are you guys all getting off to go investigate this anomaly? I think so. Yes. It's well, at, least Echo, at least Echo is. I can't speak for everyone. Yeah, yeah. I'll hop off with you and go check it out. See if we can investigate <clears throat> this wall of sand. I will it, climb aboard my trusty steed. It's uh, it, it I is. I climb aboard Devasho. <laughs> <laughs> my trustier steed. <laughs> go. Um, it, it is silent when you're on the barge, but as you get closer and closer, you just hear what sounds like billions of particulates um, scraping against the, the mindscape's surface and a, an unholy wind kind of blowing in the center of the storm. You can see maybe lit up with little pockets of um, electricity and, and um, uh, thunder and lightning in there. But yeah, as as you get off the vessel and walk closer, uh, this wall of roiling silver dust rises to impossible heights above you. And on the outermost edge, taking a a closer look, you can see what looks like instead of just sand, there's also hunks of perhaps sharpened chitin moving at high velocity inside. Maybe small bits of, of teeth and claws of swarm creatures. Slumberg, right ahead. Echo, you can sense while you're um, you're here that uh, the crown on on Sprout's head seems to be listing towards this this barrier, and indeed, you realize that is going to take uh, will in order to empower the crown and step fully into the storm. In order to withstand its its winds and well, and I know who's not this, going in there. <laughs> take this power. Well, uh, you guys can can all kind of like talk this out, but you get just the feeling it's like that moment in the Stephen King books where everyone realizes what needs be done in this fairly dangerous endeavor. It's when Sprout um, said, "I am the storm." <laughs> you're pretty sure anyone can join up and combine forces here to withstand the storm, but doing so will also, of course, bring with it a sacrifice. Um, So, but is there any benefit to doing that? I I don't remember there being a specific benefit. I think other than we don't do this. I think we all got negative negative three to will. (laughs) Right, but I think if we don't do this, bad things will also happen. Well, so, Well, so so, I mean, one person has to do this, right? Yeah. The with the previous crown empowerment, we we were able to battle link to more people because more people went in. Um, mm-hmm. So it is, but we don't know. With, um, with right. the first one, it was just Drew. It was just Echo. So we have no idea. Oh, okay, right, mattered. right, right. Because there's um, so, okay. so it, it may be so, that the empowerment is more powerful if more people go in. Sprouts will Sprouts will resolve to keep the the crown, I guess. Well, you have uh, so the the big thing we don't know is because there it seems to be a thing of will, and so far everybody has damages to will saves that are not Echo and Devasho. So should and and didn't is this not where Echo saw Devasho standing firm in the Correct. in the vision? Uh, yes, but uh, I mean, what exactly that meant? Standing here now in front of it, you all realize that you can 
join forces to help withstand whatever this effect is. All right. I'll, um, I'll go in. I'll take Devasho's hand as I ride upon yeah, his back. E- Echo 7 and will also D- go in. looks at you and says, no, remember the the prophecy was I stood here. Meaning Giddy you up, I say. Giddy up. <laughs> Devasho, do you want to wear the crown or do you want someone else to? Uh, you, want, you want to I'm keep it on the, sprouts? Uh, well, if the person who makes the sacrifice has to wear the crown, right? Uh, it didn't matter no, last time because everybody everyone made the is going to make the sacrifice if they're walking into this this super sandstorm. I feel like Sprouts is, wouldn't want anyone else to wear it. I think he he would think that the sac that that it would mean that he had to take the sacrifice because he doesn't know that his friends lost you know will you know well, you lost will is the problem like- <laughs> he lost will yes. Yeah, I'm just speaking right. purely from the character. So it sounds like um, Tress is going in, Devasha's going in, and Sprouts is going in. Echo's going in. Echo's going in. Zinnia, so, are you going to make it I, a full team? I'll watch the ship. <laughs> Seneca's <laughs> watching the I'll, ship. I'll stand guard. <laughs> You're to watch Seneca and make swarm. sure Seneca doesn't run off with the ship. Okay. okay. Uh, Zinnia hanging back. The four of you going in. Oh boy, as you walk into the storm, hands gripping one another, um, kind of putting your your back into climbing up this first set of dunes, uh, you feel yourself being pelted with shards of chitin and the claws from the sands. So you buffet both your flesh and your armor, your steel skin. You guys can feel your your KAC being buffeted, pierced with cuts and abrasions that kind of open up on your, your flesh. Is Defrex hardiness still active? <laughs> <laughs> the sand takes damage. <laughs> um, I think this might be an hour later, so probably not. <laughs> but yeah, you, you feel your eyes being buffeted by the storm. It is going to be a good amount of slashing damage, which I will roll right now. It's kind of average. Uh, 31 points of slashing damage and oh, sprouts. Okay. Marlo, you're wearing the crown here. I need you to make me a will save. Okay. With your negative, but with plus <laughs> six for your natural allies 20. being here with you. Oh, my. <laughs> it's well, a that natural 20. That could have gone uh, better or worse. <laughs> Nobody else needed to be here. So it's good. <laughs> This by himself, <laughs> just so you know. Does, I, I that, try to tell him. I try to tell him, Pat. Does that include your negative three? I mean, the negative three will be uh, 26, but I think it's a natural 20. Yeah, baby. You've got it um, <laughs> on the first one. Uh, but as you guys empower, you feel Sprouts, the crown empowered. Uh, you are also all blasted back here uh, out of the storm. Uh, about 20 feet, uh, maybe 10 feet past where Zinnia is standing here. And she's, she's, she's a 16 inch thing just fly by. <laughs> uh, you, you land harmlessly in the silver dunes, but this has left a wound, not on your armor, your person, but on your psyche. As you have sacrificed something, you cannot get back. Everyone that helped with this connection empowerment of the crown is losing some stamina points in total 15 sp off your total permanently okay cool that's not difficult to yeah how are we gonna you're just i mean just go over to the formula on the roll 20 sheet and say minus 15 at the end of the formula yeah, yeah just keep track of your your um but your total that means you lose that means you lose uh, 15 as well, right? Yes. Like you take like 15 points of stamina oh, damage. I was already 15 points that. down, so now I'm 15 points down again. Does any need to tank from here on out? Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> well, maybe that is why the the the, the um, comment of Hylax showed Devasho standing here who has the most SP. But having brought it out of the storm, it is uh, the crown once again massively empowered vibrating now ever so slightly the um echo it, it doesn't uh or uh, sprouts it doesn't sit on your your head or uh 
I guess, kind of sit around you, <laughs> but it is now hovering an inch above uh, your head, maybe a, a foot now off of Echo's shoulder and, and silently spins around you as it's connected to your mind and you all touching it can't realize its new ability as a standard action once per day. You can transfer hit points between any number of willing allies within 30 feet of yourself. And for every two champions who sacrifice to gain this power, also heal 2d8 points of hit point damage. What? Dis- distributing them uh, amongst creatures affected by this ability. So that's 48. 48. Wait, uh, no, for every, for every two champions who <laughs> sacrifice. Two. So, um, so 48 total, but you can just cycle hit points as you want within 30 feet. That's pretty cool. Once per day. So has to be kind of dire situation, but. Or oh, we're going to start taking naps a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get nappy with this. Yeah. All right. Well, um, f- first things first, uh, 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 Sprouts is a chopped salad right now, and he kind of needs a 10 minute rest. Yeah, you guys can head limp back to the Sidewinder as the storm behind you seems maybe to have weakened in the face of your resolve, having walked straight into it. Um, as you get back into Seneca's map room, you see now the ruins seemingly only a few hours away have popped back up onto the map and and Seneca will, will tell you all, oh, we, we can leave now and, and get you to this last site soon. But but Midnight Squad, I, I have a request of you all first. What is it, Seneca? Tell us. What do you need? Would you all kindly spend some time with me training and focusing your chi? Because I believe that you are ready to level up to level 10. <gasps> Ready to be continued. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, it's been a while. It's been some time since then. Hey, well, well, sacrifice some, some SP. I get some SP next week. So that's good. I was, gonna, yeah. I was gonna say I get some SP back, guys. <laughs> yeah, you lose some, you win some. And, 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 uh, and I figured it's a good time after you gained another battle mind link. If you want to get rid of that spell, you can. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a fair point. I might I might do that. <laughs> and Not level really. ten, so, we get we get uh we get uh, ability score upgrades. Yeah, ten's a, a big level for some. Oh, yeah. hey, your, your yeah. old pal Echo might finally be in positive wisdom scores, baby. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But that is uh, that is indeed for next time. Um, we still have a little bit of empowerment and some more adventures before you're able to to make make your final stand against this this swarm mindscape here in book five but uh yeah you'll be level 10 when you face those challenges next week on next week's episode uh thanks for playing with me folks thank Thank you you, patrick Patrick. listeners thanks for listening oh we'll catch you here next time on cosmic crit so long ahoy next week Cosmic Crit, an officially licensed partner of Paizo Incorporated. The Starfinder role-playing game and adventure paths are trademarks of Paizo. All Pathfinder and Starfinder images are property of Paizo and are used with permission.